Hey everyone, my name is Rohan Batua and today we're going to be talking about the motion This House, as environmentalists, would support the development and use of nuclear energy. So I'm going to talk about three things broadly. Um, the first thing I'm going to talk about is just how you should think about the debate, especially in prep time, and common pitfalls that teams might make during, prep during preparation that would mean that they would probably lose the debate. The first thing to recognize is that this is an act of motion. So you're thinking about it from the lens or the context that you yourself are an environmentalist. And if you're on prop, then you want nuclear energy. And if you're on op, then you probably don't like nuclear energy. And that's the first common mistake that teams might make, because this isn't a debate about talking about whether or not nuclear energy is good or bad but rather it's talking about the portrayal of nuclear energy and whether it would be in the best interest for an environmentalist to support the development and use of nuclear energy. The important thing to realize here is this, that talking about whether or not nuclear energy is good or bad is still important in this debate, but it's about how you reference to how nuclear energy is perceived by the general public, which is probably going to be more important in terms of winning the round. An easier way of saying this is this, even if you prove that, say on proposition that nuclear energy is a good thing and that it would probably save the environment, all opposition have to show is that even if nuclear energy is a good thing, but people don't like nuclear energy and are scared by nuclear energy, then to that end, even if you support nuclear energy as an environmentalist and it would do good things, to the end, to the to the point at which people are scared of it and are unwilling to act on it, then even if nuclear energy is good, you're not going to win the debate because you also need to show why people are going to buy into your movement or going to support you to the extent to which you're thinking about your, you as an actor or as a movement and what you want to do. So the first thing to realize is that you are an environmentalist and as a result, you have to think from that context or from that lens. The second thing to think about when you're setting up the debate is you want to characterize what supporting the development and use of nuclear energy actually looks like. Uh, here's a few things that proposition can do. The first thing proposition could do is say that environmentalists will lobby for new power plants to be built. That's very basic. That's something that would support the use of nuclear energy. But there are other more clever things that proposition could also say that would make it much easier for them to win the debate. This looks like saying, it looks like saying, raising awareness about how safe and reliable and relatively cheap nuclear energy is in like reference to other um energy sources. It looks like saying you want more research and development into new nuclear technologies. For any of you with a physics or science background, you might know that currently the how nuclear energy works is through nuclear fusion, but there are huge scientific experiments, especially in Europe, to try and develop a new form of nuclear energy called nuclear fission, which would solve all the problems that currently nuclear fusion has insofar as if a nuclear fission reactor breaks down, it doesn't explode and there's no nuclear fallout because instead of breaking apart atoms, you're putting atoms together. And as a result, you're not going to have the same meltdown that you would have in a nuclear fusion reactor. So if you did have that science background, you could say about new research and development and new nuclear technologies, which would be even better. And so that's things that proposition can do in order to make it much easier for them to set up the debate and make it much easier for them to have a good ground upon which the environmental movement from now on can talk about nuclear energy. So that's a good platform that proposition can use in order to help them win the debate because supporting the development and use of nuclear energy is incredibly vague in the motion. And as a result, it gives teams a huge opportunity to actually stand up and talk about what that might mean. In the absence of doing that, you let the other team dictate for the debate what supporting the development and use of nuclear energy actually looks like. And as a result, you're unable to, you're unable to use your own supportive characterization and framing. What my opposition say in order to like set up the debate and say, actually, no, proposition is incorrect about how environmentalists would support the development and use of nuclear energy. Here's what would actually happen instead. I think what's important for opposition to do is to challenge the perfect idealized version of how nuclear energy is going to be presented. 
And I think that's incredibly important because a lot of proposition teams, especially in world schools, take fiat power to a great extent, especially when the motion is incredibly vague. And it's important for many opposition teams to challenge the characterization and framing that proposition teams present. And an important thing to notice in world schools is a lot of teams, especially at the top, will never explicitly say that they're doing characterization or they're doing framing but rather talk about it through their rhetoric and the way they portray their arguments. And so there's some sort of implicit way that they're speaking, which makes it sound like, for example, in this debate, nuclear energy is being framed in a certain way. That's how top speakers get away with saying different kinds of things because they're able to implicitly tie these things into the way they're speaking and the rhetoric that they use. So in opposition, it's important to call out the way nuclear energy is being presented on side proposition. And actually, you should talk about how it's realistically going to manifest. How is the media likely to portray, portray it when environmentalists are supporting the use of nuclear energy? There are very obvious on, um, examples that spring to mind if you're an opposition team, places like Chernobyl, places like Fukushima. And it's impossible for proposition to ignore these examples and if you're a proposition team and an opposition team sets up the debate and says that, look, realistically, people are going to be incredibly scared of nuclear energy. The media is going to portray it in a negative light, et cetera. And it's not going to be as fairy tale as propositions say it is. On proposition, you have to be cognizant to the fact that realistically, nuclear energy has failed in the past. And there have been huge economic and like life like consequences that have, had, that have resulted from the use of nuclear energy. So on proposition, it's important not to ignore examples like Chernobyl and Fukushima, but rather say things like how the world of nuclear energy has learned from those mistakes, or how dangerous other fossil fuels and other forms of nuclear of other forms of energy are. So instead of ignoring the things that might damage your case, it's important to tackle them head on and try and try and turn them into positive material. So those that, that was a few minutes of a recognizing that this motion is about is an act of motion and second about how you set up the debate because at the end of the day this is a debate that's incredibly focused on rhetoric and portrayal and the way that the judge sees how an environmentalist would act and as a result teams should probably spend a lot of time thinking about how they want to set up the debate thinking about what they want this development and use of nuclear energy to look like and then making their arguments from that point onwards the next thing we're going to do is just look at arguments that you could make. And in an act of motion, the easiest way of looking at how to generate argumentation is just to look at the incentives of the actors that you're looking at. So essentially, you just want to look at the incentives of environmentalists. And again, in this act of motion, it's fairly simple to see what the incentives of these actors might be. In this debate, the incentive of an environmentalist is probably A, to promote their image and get more buy-in for the environmental movement. So let's consider that for, for, let's consider that first. What might propositions say in order for environmentalists to get more better image or have more buy-in? The first thing that you're going to say is that realistically, the people that you're trying to convince, the people that you're trying to sway, aren't going to be the type of people who are going to be fear-mongered into believing that nuclear energy is bad or dangerous. You can probably assume that the people that you're trying to convince to join your movement lie on some sort of reasonable scientific background. And the important, the important thing to notice about that statement is that this is a very common thing, especially in British parliamentary, if you've done that format as well, is to realize that a lot of debates happen at the margins. And a lot of debates, especially at the moment, occur with people talking about moderates or people talking about people who are likely to be swung or people in the middle. And again, when you're talking about social movements, when you're talking about environmental movements, a very basic mechanism that teams will use is just talking about the moderates or the people in the middle. And so characterizing who these people might be, instead of just saying the moderates, is an incredibly powerful way to make it much easier for you to win the debate. Because insofar as you characterize the people in the middle as having some sort of reasonable scientific background, then it's much easier to convince a judge that these people aren't going to be convinced by a media that is probably going to scare them away from nuclear energy. This is an important thing to say, especially in speech one, insofar as it preempts a lot of the opposition argumentation about fear mongering and opposition immediately from opposition one have to make a far more nuanced 
characterization and portrayal of how nuclear energy is going to be portrayed. Because especially in a lot of debates you will see is that proposition will say that nuclear energy is really good and people won't be scared by it. And opposition will be say, will stand up and say that nuclear energy is really bad and people are going to be incredibly scared of it. Rather, if proposition takes the stand and says that, look, we accept that maybe there have been negative consequences of nuclear energy in the past, but the people are going to try and convince probably understand that and are probably look, trying to look past that and see the other benefits that nuclear energy has to provide. That is when you force opposition to take a much more nuanced stance on how their presentation of nuclear energy is going to be. So at the end of the day, what you have to realize is by being charitable to the other side and taking a nuanced characterization of what a debate actually looks like, a judge is far more likely to look at your team in a far more favorable light instead of just asserting your side of the motion and saying that the other team is wrong. So be charitable and take nuanced portrayals of the debate and use that nuance to try and convince the judge that you are correct. The second thing that you might say on proposition is that it's probably quite easy to like illustrate or advertise the advantages of nuclear energy. And the reason for that is because nuclear energy doesn't rely on external weather conditions, right? So if you compare it to other renewable energy sources like wind or solar power, the issue is those are incredibly variable insofar as they depend on the weather. But nuclear energy, if you look at any grid that uses nuclear energy, for example, in the UK where I'm from, nuclear energy supplies 20% of the power to the UK day and night, 24-7, 365 days a year. It doesn't matter whether it's winter or summer or spring because nuclear energy doesn't depend on those external conditions. So that's one way you can advertise nuclear energy to people and say that, look, it's incredibly dependable and it's incredibly reliable. And the reason that is important, again, when you make a mechanism, you want to say why a mechanism is important when you impact them, is because there's incredible global energy insecurity, especially in Europe and especially in the world right now, in the context of like a war between Russia and Ukraine, in the context of future oil and gas markets looking ever and ever more uncertain. As a result, it's very easy as for you and as an environmental movement to say that you want a reliable and dependable energy source and that fossil fuels are no longer the reliable and en dependable energy source that the world has relied upon for so many years. So it's very easy for an environmental movement to frame nuclear energy as the new backbone of the global energy system. Again, this is a powerful characterization and portrayal of what nuclear energy is going to look like insofar as you point out the flaw in the alternative or the opposition to nuclear energy or the opposition to environmentalists and you point out why you win as an environmentalist because you're able to beat out the people who support fossil fuels and oils on the very same metric that fossil fuels and that fossil fuels have been using for years because fossil fuels the way that they've advertised themselves as there are huge plentiful resources of fossil fuels it's never going to run out they're incredibly reliable and as a result you should probably use them so in that end you can frame nuclear energy as the new way of being reliable and dependable the third thing you could probably say on proposition, and this is a very big mechanism that's often used in environmental debates, is this idea of like NIMBYism. And what NIMBYism means or what NIMBY stands for is not in my backyard. And what this has to do with the environmental movement is a lot of people support the environment and are happy to help the environment to the extent to which it doesn't impact their lives, which is why a lot of people in theory would be very happy with like supporting solar panels and wind turbines and nuclear power stations. But if you tell them that, that you're gonna put a wind turbine in their backyard, that's probably the point at which they probably turn and say, you know what, I'm fine with using coal or oil. So that's an important concept. And you can use this to your advantage because if you compare nuclear energy to other forms of energy that environmentalists might use instead, think like wind turbines, solar panels, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, a lot of these things, like wind turbines, you need far more of them to feed like a certain number of people in a population, which means that necessarily you're going to need to convince a lot more people to put a wind turbine near their backyard as opposed to one nuclear power station that you could frame in proposition that goes in the middle of nowhere that isn't going to affect other people. 
to that end, if you can show that one nuclear power station is equal to, say, many solar panels and many wind turbines, and that people are opposed to having, especially these energy sources very close to home, one nuclear power station is probably better than a lot of wind turbines because more people are going to be happier with one nuclear state power station in the middle of nowhere than wind turbines closer to their home. What might opposition say in terms of image and media buy-in? I think the opposition arguments under this side are a lot more apparent. The first thing to notice is that the adverse effects of nuclear energy is incredibly scary and it can very easily be portrayed and twisted by the media. And the first thing to notice here, or the first thing to characterize here is that a lot of teams will talk about the media in a very abstract sense. Like the media will say this, or the media will do X, Y, and Z. But what we have to realize is that the media also has incentives and the media also is probably like controlled by certain groups of people. So a powerful way opposition can make this mechanism or argument far stronger is to say that, look, who controls the media? probably huge fossil fuel and oil companies like ExxonMobil because of the amount of capital they have. And so if ExxonMobil sees environmentalists lobbying for nuclear energy, that is a very easy target for companies like ExxonMobil through the, via the use of the media to target and like to target environmentalists to the extent to which they can just point out the examples like Chernobyl and Fukushima. They can point out countries like France who have a huge amount of nuclear energy and nuclear power stations who ship out all of their nuclear waste to Siberia and it's been in the news recently. So there are huge adverse effects of nuclear energy that can very easily be spot shone a spotlight on by the media. And you can easily show as an opposition team that even if environmentalists have the best intentions and even if environmentalists can try and show nuclear energy in good light, all you have to show in opposition is to say that no matter what Greenpeace does, no matter what people, climate change activists at rallies say, at the end of the day, on like national or big media outlets, if they're the ones being controlled by fossil fuels, then you don't want to stand up for a source of energy that can very easily be villainized and very easily be turned against you. So these big oil companies or these big media companies may use nuclear energy as a scapegoat to, to like basically mock the entire environmental movement. And what you have to do here as an opposition team is notice and engage with the comparative that you are still an environmentalist, you still want to help the environment, but you just don't want to do it through the mechanism of nuclear energy. And that's important because now you have to compare how the media sees nuclear energy to how the media sees, for example, what might be the opposition alternative, for example, solar panels or wind turbines. And what you have to say here and notice is that solar panels and wind turbines don't have the same negative connotations, nearly, nearly nowhere near the same negative connotations that nuclear energy has to that extent. Even if fossil fuel companies are out to get you, this is the nuance that you want to say in opposition one, fossil fuel companies are out to get environmentalists on either side of the house. Even if they are out to get you, it's much harder for fossil fuel companies to like come and target you because it's very hard to say bad things about wind turbines and solar panels, but it's very easy to say bad things about nuclear energy. So as a result, you have to understand as a team um, that you, in an actor motion are arguing for the same actor, you want the same, you have the same best interests. It's the mechanism by which you go about achieving your goals that is different. So in opposition, you might fall into the trap of arguing why nuclear energy is bad, but you need to also prove why your alternative in opposition is likely to be good. The final thing that you, we, we're gonna discuss is that it's good enough to talk about buy-in and image, but you have to realize why that is important in the grand scheme of the debate, because Buy-in is important for environmentalists insofar as it means that you get more support for the movement, which means that you might get more funding, which might give you more lobbying power, which might give you more of an ability to enact change in the future, which at the end of the day, as your final goal of the environmentalist movement, which means that you probably are more likely to better help the environment or better save the environment. So to that end, you probably need to do maybe 10 seconds of work to show why buy-in is important, but given that buy-in is probably something that both teams are trying to argue upon or win on, it probably isn't going to be a key factor in the round. So what's important to note here is that in some debates, 
arguing why the impact of your argument is more important than the opposition's impact is an incredibly important thing, especially in second and third speeches. But in this debate, it's less important because you're arguing for the same person. And as a result, you have the same best interests. Again, what we want to do at the end of the day is help the environment. So the final thing that teams might want to consider is whether nuclear energy actually helps the environment. So this is a very good even if case for both proposition and opposition. What our proposition can say is that if we're able to show that we're better able to help the environment, even if there's low probability of us being successful, if nuclear energy is so much more beneficial to the environment than anything else we could have done, then it's still worth the environmental movement having done this. There are many reasons why nuclear energy might massively help the environment. I've already said a few, like when how Europe is so incredibly globally energy unstable, how new technologies in nuclear nuclear energy, especially in fission, might be the new way, the new wave of, of, of energy and renewable energy. And as a result, those are reasons why you might help the environment. In opposition, you might say that nuclear energy won't actually help the environment because it requires huge like sunk costs and research and development that often developing countries might not be able to access. That's an incredibly uh, that's an incredibly nice argument for an extension when you talk about how different types of renewable energy are more accessible for different types of countries. And as a result, some nuclear energy is only accessible to, for, for example, very developed countries because they require huge amounts of research and development, sunk costs, scientists building these um, power plants, etc. So at the end of the day, the final impact that both teams are trying to get is that you're both trying to help the environment. So the final round of impacts you're trying to consider is, does nuclear energy actually help the environment? And is it better than the alternatives? So hey, what are the key takeaways to take away at the end of thinking about this debate? The first key takeaway is, is to realize is that the round is a lot about portrayal and rhetoric. And this is incredibly important. Often the way that you speak about nuclear energy in your speech mirrors the kind of perception that you're trying to say people view nuclear energy in the status quo. And that's how you convince the judge. What does that mean? It means that in proposition, the way that you're trying to speak about nuclear energy is incredibly positive. Like you're trying to speak about nuclear energy in a very positive light and talk about all its good things and be very excited and exuberant about nuclear energy because that mirrors the way you probably want nuclear energy be, to be presented in the real world. If you're in opposition, you want to speak about nuclear energy in an incredibly wary tone. You want, to be, you want to talk about it as if it's something to be scared of, as if it's something to be skeptical of, as if it's something dangerous. So in that way, you want to use your rhetoric and portrayal of nuclear energy to mirror the way that you want nuclear energy to be perceived. Again, world schools ob obviously isn't judged on the, on the like implicit rhetoric that you use. But the implicit rhetoric that you use goes a long way into subtly convincing a judge of the characterization and framing that you're using for the round. And given this a round that is incredibly dependent on the characterization, framing, and setup, it's probably important for you to do this. The second key takeaway is to realize is that the round is not about whether or not nuclear energy is good or bad, but considerations of whether nuclear energy is good or bad is good insofar as you tie that back into whether or not it will help the environmental movement. And the final key takeaway is to realize is that the weighing metrics for this round are extremely, extremely clear. So in the whip and reply speeches, it is important to again bring up the incentives of environmentalists, talk about what those incentives are, how each teams interact with those incentives, both teams probably are going to agree on the incentives of environmentalists. So for reply speeches and whip speeches, the way your whip collapses is probably going to be extremely clear. And the areas upon which you're winning as a team are probably going to be extremely clear. So the way you win is not by the minute minutia weighing metrics that you use because they're very clear, but rather on the overall characterization and framing that you're trying to convince the judge of. I hope that made sense. And I look forward to coaching you guys in the winter.